Hey, how you doing macro students? This is Jacob Clifford. It's been three days since the AP macro exam. I'm gonna go over the answers with you right now. Here we go. Okay, first reaction, these three responses were Before we jump into it, let me mention three things. First, thank you so much for watching my videos. I made some live streams this year. I hope they helped you guys get ready for the AP test. Seriously, thank you so much for watching my videos or getting the ultimate review packet. It's been a pleasure being your quasi online econ teacher. Number two, if you want me to give a shout out to you or your school or your teacher, get together and send something to me in the mail. I made a video that talks about this. I'll do an unboxing video where I'll take that item and I'll talk about how it's related to economics give you a shout out and put it up on my wall. The AP test is over, you got nothing better to do. Get together, send me something in the mail and I'll make that video as soon as I can. And number three, if you're a teacher, take a look at my online or in-person workshops. It would be awesome to work with you in the summer. Okay, enough of that. Let's jump into the fear responses for 2023. I'm not gonna lie to you, my predictions were pretty spot on on this one. If you watched my prediction video, it probably helped you significantly. So the first response was pretty standard. It's gonna be worth between 10 or 11 points. This was it. It started off by giving you some numbers. It says the real GDP is 500 million and the full employment GDP is 550 million. And in A, it asks you to draw aggregate demand showing what's going on. And of course, it's telling you specifically what to label it. Y1, PL1, YF. This is the graph you drew. This is usually worth two points. Now again, remember I made this video three days after the AP test, so I don't have the full rubric yet. But if you watch the video later, I'll have the rubric in the description so you can see how many points they actually assigned for each part of the question. But make sure you drew it with a negative output gap and make sure you use the letters they wanted you to put, not the numbers they gave you earlier. In B, it says if there's no policy, what's gonna happen? And you had to explain this in words. Remember, it was an explain. So what's gonna happen? The short run supply curve is going to increase because wages and prices are gonna fall when there's a negative output gap. And it didn't ask you to label it. So don't actually draw that shift. You just had to explain that shift and say that the price level is less than PL1. So the new price level will be less because the aggregate supply is gonna shift to the right. In C, it asks you about the multiplier effect and you actually do some calculations. It says calculate the minimum change and the direction of the change in spending that would close this $50 million gap. And of course, it also gave you the marginal propensity to save, which is 0.2. So the spending multiplier is five. So if the gap is 50 million and the multiplier is five, then an increase of $10 million in government spending would close the gap. And in C2, you had to show that shift showing aggregate demand shift to the right, price level going up, quantity going up, labeling this PL2. In D, it asks you to draw the loanable funds market and show what's gonna happen when there's an increase in deficit spending. And the answer is two possible answers. Either it's an increase in demand or a decrease in supply. I'm doing a decrease in supply, but either one of those would have actually worked. But to get the point, you gotta make sure to draw and label the entire graph correctly. In E, it says if there's a higher interest rate because of what you showed on the loanable funds market, in D, what's gonna happen to the price of previously issued bonds? The answer is go down. Remember, bond prices and interest rates are inversely related. And no explanation required. All you had to say was bond prices go down. Now here in E2, the rate of economic growth in the long run is going to decrease because higher interest rates lead to less investment and less business spending on capital goods, and there's less capital accumulation, and that's the idea of crowding out. In fear response number two, it starts off by asking you to draw the Phillips curve. It says the actual inflation rate is currently higher than the expected rate of inflation, which means we have an inflationary gap or a positive output gap. And if I may, I told you so. And the correct graph for A would look like this with a point X showing this idea of an inflationary gap. Now in B, it introduces the new monetary policy stuff saying that banks have ample reserves, identify a specific monetary policy that could cause inflation to go down. The answers would be an increase in the interest on reserves. Or you could say an increase in administered rates, but what you couldn't say is anything about open market operations. So don't say anything here about selling bonds because in ample reserves, that monetary policy doesn't really work. Now in C, it says what happens because of the higher interest rates from B, to the flow of international financial capital into the country, the answer is it's going to increase. And you had to explain, you had to say if there's an increase in interest rates, then foreigners are gonna to wanna to buy more of the assets because they want that higher rate of return. And indeed, you didn't have to draw the graph, but you had to explain it. What's gonna to happen to the value of the currency? Well, if people want assets, they need the currency, so the demand is going to increase, causing the currency to appreciate. So you had to explain, you could say either there's an increase in the demand for the currency because people wanna buy the assets, so the currency will appreciate, 
Or you could say that people inside the country are going to go buy other countries' assets, and so the supply is going to decrease, causing the currency to appreciate. Either way, you have to say appreciate and why. So for fear response number three, you're doing some calculations. It's focusing on unemployment. It gives you some information here and says that the labor force participation rate is 70%. So you know there's 700,000 people who are in the labor force. Now in A, it asks you to calculate the number of people that are unemployed. They've never done this before. Usually they'll give you the number of people who are unemployed. They give you the labor force and you have to figure out the unemployment rate. This time they gave you the unemployment rate. You had to figure out that it was 63,000 people who are unemployed. And you had to show the work. So again, there were 700,000 thousand people in the labor force. It said 9% of them were unemployed. 9% of 700,000 people is 63,000. And in B, it gave you the easiest question on the entire test. It says, is the economy experience a recessionary gap, inflationary gap, or no output gap? And they gave you all the information in the beginning. They say the unemployment rate is 9%, but the natural rate of unemployment is 5%. So we have more unemployment than the natural rate, so we have a negative output gap. But you did have to explain and say something like the natural rate of unemployment is less than the actual rate of unemployment, so we must have some cyclical unemployment. It's not just frictional and structural. You didn't really have to say that, but you did have to explain. Check, check, C was actually easier than B. Just show where the economy is using the production possibilities curve. It looked like this. We had a negative output gap, so point A is somewhere inside the curve. And in D, it goes back to talking about unemployment. It said if some people leave the labor force, the people who are unemployed leave, what's going to happen to the labor force participation rate? That is going to decrease, right? The same number of people in the working age population, but fewer of them in the labor force, that would cause the labor force participation rate to fall. And for D2, it asks you what's going to happen to the unemployment rate when these workers leave, and the right answer was decrease. Okay, first reaction. These three responses were ridiculously easy. I heard the multiple choice was actually pretty hard, so it's kind of level things out, but I hope you did great. I hope you got the score that you wanted and you deserved, and I really appreciate you watching my videos and doing everything you've done this year to learn and love economics. Again, thank you so much for watching. Congratulations to you seniors who are graduating. You guys are awesome. Till next time.